Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-black control deck featuring four copies of Arcane Bombardment, a card I've featured before in one of my decks, the six-man enchantment saying whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, exile an instant or sorcery card at a random from your graveyard, and then copy each card exiled with Arcane Bombardment, so that will track all the cards we've exiled prior, so the more cards we play, the more we exile, the more value we get from Bombardment and then we can cast any number of those copies, of course, without paying their mana costs. So we can also potentially trigger Bombardment in the opponent's turn, so the goal is going to be to trigger Bombardment once in our turn, maybe by casting some big sorcery, and then we have a ton of cheap instants, so we can enable Bombardment in the opponent's turn once again to get maximum value. And the best way to cheat Bombardment into play is thanks to these 4 mana instants, Unexpected Windfall and Big Score, which are virtually the same, discarding a card as an additional cost to draw to and make 2 treasure tokens, so we can potentially cast our Bombardment on turn 5 already, and if we also have a cheap instant or sorcery we can maybe already start enabling the Arcane Bombardment the same turn we play it. And then the rest of our deck needs to include a lot of removal, so we can stay alive long enough to get all these expensive cards in play. So at one mana we've got two copies of Voltage Surge, to have a few treasure makers to maybe deal four damage at instant speed. Spikefield Hazard can exile and only deals one damage, but can also be played as a land. And then two copies of Frostbite, to go with our Snow Lands to potentially deal three damage for one mana at instant speed. And one of the advantages of the black version over the blue-red version that I featured before is that we get access to some discard effects with two copies of Duress as a way to take away any non-creature non-land cards from the opponent's hand, so we can maybe take away answers for Arcane Bombardment. And then we also have two copies of Go Blank as more discard, making them discard two, as well as exiling their graveyard. We've got more spot removal with Infernal Grasp, destroying any creature at the cost of two life. Cleansing Wildfire is also a fun one, as it can punish those greedy three-color mana bases that don't have a ton of basic lands, especially once we exile it with Arcane Bombardment and start casting multiple copies. And then at Cram Session, alongside our two copies of Igneous Inspiration, give us access to the sideboard lessons, which are also quite synergistic with Arcane Bombardment, as we can cast more instants and sorceries to once again trigger Bombardment and accumulate more value. The life gain from Cram Session, also quite useful against the various aggro decks in the format, and Inspiration can deal 3 damage at sorcery speed. And then our lessons include Environmental Sciences to gain to find a basic, Start from Scratch can deal 1 damage or destroy an artifact, and then we also have Containment Breach in our sideboard, despite not having any green lands, we can still use our treasures or maybe the Celestis to cast the sideboard lesson to potentially blow up an enchantment, otherwise we don't have any answers to enchantments in the main deck. And then Pest Summoning can generate some chum blocking 1-1 tokens to maybe buy time, Prophecy as card draw and double mascot exhibition as another win condition to make a variety of tokens. Could potentially play some of the blue lessons as well for card draw, since we can also cast those using Celestis and our treasures, so that's a choice you can make. And then we've got some sweepers with two copies of Crush the Week, which can be foretold on turn two, so we can cast it for one mana, as well as two copies of Burn Down the House, which is also a nice one to exile with Arcane Bombardment from our graveyard, as we can still make three devils even if the board is already clear. And then the Celestis gives us another nice ramp artifact to maybe get Bombardment in play ahead of schedule. We've got a lot of one mana plays that we can cast in the same turn we play Celestis between all the one drops and maybe a foretold Crush the Week. And then the additional card selection when it switches from day to night is also quite useful so we can find the Bombardment more reliably. And then in the mana base we also have two copies of Azov Consumption as a potential 6 mana sorcery to drain the opponent for 4 and gain 4, so we can maybe discard this to our Windfall and Big Score, and then maybe later exile it with Arcane Bombardment as another way to help stabilize against the various aggro decks, and can also be kind of its own win condition. So we've got 24 lands, in addition to the two copies of Consumption and Spikefield Hazard, which can be played tapped, so no shortage of mana, which is quite necessary in this deck trying to cast expensive spells. And then we also have some creature lands as additional win conditions with two copies of Hive and two copies of Den of the Bugbear. And then of course do need some snow lands to enable Frostbite, but we're not going super hard on the snow theme, so I'm still happy to include some of the red-black dual lands as well. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Some early removal, 
Celestus into Big Score, can even let it switch to Knight to loot with the Celestus and then cast Big Score in the opponent's turn, as most of our cheap interaction is instant speed anyway. Facing a red aggro deck. Okay, so losing two of Infernal Grasp is not ideal. Although Celestus can maybe gain some life back, it looks like red white aggro. Alright, so we can grasp the initiates. Put maybe holding a copy of Play with Fire. Cram session's nice. Still probably better to Celestus. And then next turn I could make the play I described of passing to let it switch to Knight. Or we can big score into maybe cram session if we need the life gain. Luminarch pumps etching. Take three. Now we could also cram session for, let's say, the pest summoning to make some chum blockers. Although with etching, I don't think we gain any life of the pests dying. So it's only kind of a speed bump here. Whereas we might want to find actual removal for etching instead. But uh, yeah, again, it's mostly instant speed removal we could draw. So might as well pass and loot with the Celestus. And then we have three snow lines already to enable potential frostbite. Probably wanted to cast a big score before Aspirin triggered, but... Let's see here, discard pathway. And we hit a duress and a spike field hazard, at least that can kill aspirants. And we didn't get punished. And then duress can maybe take another burn spell. Like a royal eruption. It's gonna be a brutal cathar during night, so I guess that's the downside of letting it switch to night in the first place. Although we can switch it back to daytime pretty easily now. So we can cram session. Probably don't want to go for pass summoning now that the Cathar would transform back, since they can just exile a token for free. So instead, we can go digging with introduction, or we could go big with mascot exhibition to actually block profitably. Yeah, let's go for mascot exhibition, and then just the rest to have a look. And grab that Royal Eruption. Raichu is going to be scary if they can play it next turn. So hopefully they don't. And pass it back. Gain another life. Crime Session's nice. It's going to be a Sunrise Cavalier. Still pretty good. And also a card we don't want to keep in play while switching from day to night and back and forth. So we're taking eight. So, time for Mascot Exhibition, and then um, probably hang on to Crime Session, since we're not going to be in any immediate danger of dying. Although if they play Raichu next turn, it is going to be pretty rough. Should still be able to line up some reasonable blocks. And I want to make sure we have a play for next turn. And keeping our treasures is still useful in case we find Bombardment, so we can maybe play it and Crime Session in the same turn. Opponent passes, Inspiration's nice, so that can get rid of Cavalier as the biggest threat right now. And I'm happy to get another Mascot Exhibition, could also Containment Breach to get rid of Kumano. Which is also quite reasonable, as that would put a counter on the Raichu potentially. And the 2-2 two -two also... Not going to be irrelevant. And then Cram Session can get another Mascot Exhibition. Could also get rid of the 3-3 etching. Also certainly an option. And then Flyer should be able to attack here. And we'll leave everything else back. Alright, it's a land but it enters tapped. Celestis triggers. Moonrage Brute transforms. Might as well loot here. Get rid of Frostbites. 
And then a cram session. Learn for another mascot exhibition. Although there is an argument for not casting it, because if we do, it transforms back to day and Cathar will exile my 4-4 four -four token for free. Which we probably want to avoid. I think we just attack with the flyer again. And... I guess what happens if they play Raiju next turn, put counter on Brutes. Then we eat a Raiju and can chump the Brutes, so that's not the end of the world. So they probably won't even attack. And then... Probably fine to keep land in hand now in case we want to loot it away. Hive couldn't attack into the first striker either. Otherwise we could have activated that instead. Opponent's not gonna attack. So it stays night. Spikefield the draw. Okay, so... Attack with our flyer, plus maybe our 4-4. The fact that our opponent didn't even play Raichu is a little suspicious, so they might have a, another play with fire to block and finish off the elemental. But I think that's still acceptable. Opponent takes it. And play another exhibition. Keep it night time. And then next turn we might be able to animate our creature lands and attack for the win. It's gonna be a royal eruption killing our 2 1 flyer, sure. Maybe they can double spell here. Alright, so that will transform it back to day. And exile one of my 4 4s. But then we also get to loot with the Celestus. And uh, now we can attack with our creature lands a little bit better. And a go blank's not bad either. So let's see here. I can animate creature lands. And if I just play a land, I can activate a second one, if I'm not mistaken. Which is probably better than uh, going for the go blank. Opponent has three blockers. Block, block, block. And then they would still take... Uh, let's see, five, six, plus four, ten exactly. So I think that checks out. Animate hive. Animates then. And we do not want to tap our hive. So you have to be a bit mindful here. What just happened? Well, good thing our opponent conceded, but the auto tapper tapping my hive when I was manually tapping my treasures is something new. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a decent hand actually have the bombardment this time around and we could try and hang on to consumption to discard it to big score so we have it in the graveyard and i think that's probably going to be fine here although there's a small chance we don't hit our fourth land for big score although i can cram session for environmental sciences to make sure that happens now that we're up against mono green and we drew a fourth land I could cram session for something else, maybe like a pest summoning to try and chum block. Although I cannot cast it next turn since we're missing double black. Could just get a start from scratch to kill their 2 1, which they shouldn't be able to grow yet. Kind of like that idea. And opponent's probably playing a Seekers Chariot, which we can also take out if we maybe replay it with bombardment later. So we'll take two and see what two drop they have. They don't have any. So there is a chance they have a protection spell for pack leader here, maybe a pump spell. But I think the plan is still to deal one damage, make them use it. Right, Snakeskin Veil puts a counter on it too. Having the burn down the house in hand is definitely good insurance. Means we have a reset button available. Field of Runes, a new one in mono green. Don't often see that. Makes it pretty hard to play your old growth troll on curve. And yeah, just a 1-1 lair attacking, not too threatening. 
So now we can pass with big score available. Or we could main phase it in case we draw into duress to take away Isika's chariot. I think I'm still gonna just pass to represent additional interaction that they might have to consider. Sculptor's fine. Okay, so we'll take three. Big score, discard consumption. Might as well do it now. Don't have a one mana play, which would be ideal so we can bombardment and play something else. I'm not opposed to just wiping the board either. Could also make three devils, which buy us quite a bit of time too. So no shortage of options. What if I cram session for environmental sciences and just keep up infernal grasp? Is that better? And then next turn we could maybe bombardment and play a two drop. Since it feels a bit premature to wipe the board for two small creatures. So sure, let's cram session. Could also go for mascot exhibition here. But could always use more lands. And then we'll pass it back. Don't really want to use Infernal Grasp. Since next turn we can combine it with Bombardments. But it may be necessary. Right, it's going to be Chariots as we suspected. Gross is a pack leader. Okay, so now... Could just take four and next turn burn down the house and then wait one more turn on Bombardments. And then we still keep up Infernal Grasp to kill Chariots. Although we could also get lucky and replay Start from Scratch to destroy it. So there's a lot of things to consider here. At 21 life I feel okay taking 4. And then now... Yeah, let's burn down the house. And that leaves us 3 mana. And then Puns likely able to crew chariots. And then we'll have to decide if we want to take it out with our Infernal Grasp. Or if we want to keep it as a spell to play alongside Bombardment. Right, just a Sculptor that does not crew chariots, so now we get to untap. And I'm also not hating Bombardment into Duress. So we have a look, or we can Infernal Grasp the Chariots, but potentially run into another Snakeskin Veil. Yeah, Duress seems fine. Will give us a lot of information to work with as well. And we had to start from scratch to destroy Chariots, perfect. Maybe take away a second copy, and see, yeah, no shortage of Chariots. Could also take Renan 7 instead now, since we have the start from scratch in exile, so we can pretty easily destroy Chariot over and over, and if they draw land, they could already play their Planeswalker instead. Which they did. Could see the Oddity now instead. But we're pretty much where we want to be in the matchup. Mono Green typically doesn't have answers to Bombardment unless they've got a Boseju in their mana base, which is not always the case. And we've got plenty of removal, some life gain, like Crime Session to replay as well. And we probably want to keep our instance for the opponent's turn to trigger Bombardment once again. So for right now, we want to play a Sorcery. Could go for Inspiration, so we can tag the Oddity and finish it off with a 1 damage. That looks good. And hit a Crime Session as well. And we can get our exhibition now, I think. And learn for... Sure, get a prophecy. Maybe pass summoning. And yeah, opponent has seen enough. This bombardment's gonna very quickly take over. Probably would have passed and cast big score in the opponent's turn to trigger bombardment once again. And that should be game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems keepable. Got some discards, and then Wildfire to maybe help us draw some extra lands. Inspiration can also help, and might as well lead with Duress. See what we're up against. 
black white angels vanishing verse is an answer to bombardment so it's still good to take it here see the enduring angel at five mana jada at two and we can take out their land here i guess they're also playing blue maybe for linvala no creature lands in sight so fine to fire it off on turn two And then Jada's gonna get Inspirationed. And then... We've got our fourth land for big score now too. And then what to learn for is an interesting question. Could be... Environmental Sciences is kind of the safe pick when in the early game. Although if we miss on big score, getting mascot exhibition could have also been fine. Since we do need to get rid of that vanishing verse before we get down bombardment. Opponent plays a land and passes. So, yeah, going for big score is fine. Could also go blank plus play a tap land. Which I don't mind. Maybe get rid of that second vanishing verse. Okay, opponent hangs on to Vanishing Verse. So their hands, Vanishing Verse, Angel, and now two unknown cards. One card we don't want to face is Legion Angel, since that provides a steady string of threats. There's Bombardment. Still need to flush out that Vanishing Verse. And if our opponent taps out, we might get lucky Bombardment, copy one of our discard spells and get there. So, for now, probably just big score discarding Sciences. And then I might want to main phase it in case we draw another duress. Or I could discard land since science is a spell to trigger bombardment. Which is also quite reasonable. Alright, fine, let's discard land. Alright, and I'll hang on to my treasures. So next turn we can Bombardment into Sciences. There's Linvala, as we suspected. So Shield's down on Vanishing Verse, but they have three cards in hand, so we specifically need to hit Duress, as Go Blank would not necessarily be good enough. I think it's still kind of worth it to go for it, since we get immediate value, and the alternative is not really great. We can maybe activate a Creature Land, or we can play Celestus, but... Yeah, let's hope to hit something sweet of bombardments. And the wildfire, not the best. I guess we can go for swamp in case they don't have more copies. Land comes into play tapped, so there was no risk of them casting vanishing verse end of turn. Otherwise, it would have been pretty sketchy to make that play. All right, our opponent doesn't actually have another Swamp. So maybe they won't be able to Vanishing Verse after all. Opponent plays Overseer. Not tapping the Courtyard is a little suspicious since if they drew a Black Source they would have been unable to Vanishing Verse. So probably would have tapped differently. Limvala hits us for three, and now we've got another chance of making them discard Vanishing Verse. So, can even big score in the opponent's turn once again. So things are going quite nicely for us. And we hit Inspiration. And I probably want to target Overseer instead of Limvala, because if they sack Limvala, I guess it doesn't matter since they could always go for Hexproof, which also fizzles the learn. Alright, fine, we'll take out Limvala, make them sacrifice it. And then probably go after Courtyard so they won't be able to play their Black Angels if they draw them. Yeah, if we went after Overseer, they could just sack Linvala to give Hexproof, which would also fizzle Inspiration. But I guess we maybe give them room to make a mistake. Ponan did not sack Linvala, so now we get a free Mascot Exhibition. And yeah, we're in the driver's seat now. 
can pass, big score in the opponent's turn. Might have wanted to do it in their upkeep before potentially drawing a black source so we could hit a discard spell at instant speed. But I guess we can do it now. And it's going to be another big score. Inspiration kills Overseer, Wildfire, their lands. And yeah, playing a three color deck does have its disadvantages as they might run out of basic lands soon. And the Arrow Point's out of basic, so now Wildfire is just pure land destruction. And uh, we get to basically cast two copies every turn cycle. So there's no way our opponent recovers from this. We've got Mascot Exhibition as our finisher here, so we can close out the game pretty quickly. And can give up a little bit of bombardment value if we'd like, although why give up value when we can Frostbite in the opponent's turn? And then Exhibition, cast everything. I guess our opponent does have Hexproof from their Angel now, so we won't be able to target them with the Go Blank, but we will be able to take out the Angel, and then in the opponent's turn we can still cast our Go Blank at instant speed, so nothing of value was lost there. And our opponent packs it in, yeah, just too much value, and that Wildfire actually proving to be quite important. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands could use a little bit of help. It's got a lot of interaction, but it's all kind of low impact with double spike field. But if we draw one of our four mana instants to make treasure, then we're on our way. I think it's still probably a keep, but not an exciting one. And I think we keep up hazard in case they have a turn to aspirants. Although it does mean I wouldn't be able to play anything turn two other than another spike field hazard. I think it's just too important to kill Aspirin before it gets out of hand. It's gonna be a Rune of Sustenance instead, okay. So maybe a Naya Runes deck. So not too many one toughness creatures, except for maybe the one mana spirit. We'll play a tapped consumption. And their deck probably doesn't have a ton of basics, so Wildfire could also be effective. It's gonna be a Kami, which we do want to potentially exile, but don't want to waste double hazard on it. Okay, so what's our play here? Could keep up Infernal Grasp, punish another rune being played on Kami. Either way, I'm probably going to Duress. And Showdown is kind of a must answer. Legion Angel I don't love seeing. So Fable's also kind of rough, but Showdown's the biggest problem that we can actually take. So opponent's unlikely to play the rune next turn, they're probably just playing Legion Angel. So at that point, I guess we'll get a tap land out of the way. Can take a few hits from Kami, eventually clean up the board with Burn Down the House. And then we need to find our Bombardment to take over. Take three. And Windfall was a good draw. Okay, so now I'm in favor of Windfall. Do we let a token hit us? It's probably fine. And then hope they just play the Legion Angel. It's gonna be a Naturalist's growing Kami. If they get it above 5 toughness, that's gonna be a problem. Although we can always Infernal Grasp, I suppose. But I'm going for Naturalist plus Rune. I doubt they're enchanting their creature here. That would be pretty risky. Rune of Speed, never mind. So they have another Rune to grow Kami. So they can get it above 5 Toughness if they want. But I guess we let this Rune resolve and then kill Kami if they play another rune, hopefully on the Kami of Transients itself. Alright, put on Diversifies, so they're kind of playing around it. Now 
now I'm going to be forced to windfall killing Kami. Put into tanks with the team. And we'll windfall discarding Spikefield. Cast Infernal Grasp and then we still need a land for Burn Down the House, which we did draw. Okay, so we're still taking a pretty big hit. Don't love that we're forced to wipe the board before they get Legion Angel in play and Reflection. So there's still going to be a lot for us to deal with. Opponent actually runs out the rune while we're tapped out. Okay. Any chance I can maybe afford to wait? Take six. Opponent transforms Fable. Gets a Legion Angel in play, then we wipe the board. It's not completely unreasonable. Although we could be dead to a Runeforge champion getting a Rune of Speed. So that's a problem. But double wildfire might mess up their mana, we'll see. Hit Jetmir's Garden. For starters. And they may not have a mountain, so I'll go after Sundown Pass. And see what else we draw. Yeah, no mountain confirmed. Crush the weak could be useful. So I guess I'll hang on to Spikefield Hazard, as that can combine with Crush the Weak to take out a 3 toughness creature. And hope there's no Runeforge champion, which would still kill us here. Rune of Speed would also do it. Although they need red mana to cast that one. Lair of the Hydra, which they managed to somehow save until after double Wildfire. There's Legion Angel getting another copy. Okay, so we can wipe the boards, but we'll be at 3 facing a lethal lair. So not loving my position anymore. Azov Consumption... It's not gonna do it here, is it? So... Yeah, we have to burn down the house. If I crush the weak, I can hazard to also finish off Angel, but then we're still facing a 3-3 Goblin. So yeah, the lair's gonna make the difference, sadly. I wonder how this game would have continued if we uh, didn't have to face lair, put in place another Angel. We spend some mana killing it. Kami we can also potentially exile with the Crush the Weak. But it would have been pretty tough with this Legion Angel providing a steady stream of creatures. And again, if our opponent finds a Runeforge champion at any point with haste, that's going to be hard to beat. So yeah, things didn't quite line up the way we wanted to this game. It's going to be a 4-powered lair. And for 1 mana there's no real answers, as we don't have any treasures to sacrifice. Okay, GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's probably fine. Early crush the weak to make sure we don't get overrun by aggro, and then big score to hopefully find a bombardment. And then we'll prioritize playing our snow lands. Can cram session against a green deck. Not quite sure what they're playing, but it's probably going to be fine to have one Crush the Week available. So we'll set that up, and then next turn we could maybe cast it alongside Cram Session. Don't know if I'll foretell the second copy. Because if it's a matchup where it's not particularly great, I might be better off discarding it to Big Score. Well, a Catilda Humans deck is probably a good matchup for Crush the Week. So... I can Cram Session and get, let's say, Mascot Exhibition. Although this feels like a matchup where we need to be the control player until we actually get Bombardment going, as a single Exhibition just gets dealt with by like a Brutal Cathar and our opponent can easily go over the top. So maybe I actually want a card draw from Prophecy. And then we'll pass. Let them overextend, and I have the option of casting Crush the Week plus a second copy if they play a 4 toughness creature like Adelin, for instance. Although ideally they just play a bunch of small stuff we can wipe away. It's 
going to be a naturalist. Okay, so a bit of an enchantment theme as well. And a wedding announcement. That's a good one. All right, at least Crush the Week is going to be useful. And then we could either Big Score, Crush the Week, or Introduction to Prophecy plus Crush the Week. Kind of liking Big Score in the sense that that can maybe set up Arcane Bombardment next turn. Although an enchantment deck is going to have answers for it, unfortunately, so we might have to find some discard effects first to clear a path. So if that's the case, let's just uh, introduction, bottom some lands, and then crush the weak, and we can be more patient on big score. Companion draws. And announcement makes a token, put and missed a land drop too there. So now we can maybe main phase big score. If we let them attack with both creatures, they draw off announcements. Which I may also want to avoid, so that's the reason to voltage surge. And then crush the weak and still clean up the tokens even if they get plus one plus one. So let's big score. Discarding probably a land. Could also discard Consumption, which is not unreasonable, so it's in the graveyard for Bombardment later. Although I might need the extra spell to trigger it in the first place. And a Go Blank is useful. So I think we're gonna end up killing a creature before it gets a chance to attack. So Announcement doesn't draw. But we'll see what they do. Naturalists. That would survive with Announcement giving plus one plus one. So might have to kill that instead here. Could of course also deal four damage with Voltage Surge. And another Companion. Alright, let's kill Naturalists before they make more use of it. So all these Companions we can at least wipe up with Crush the Weak. But Announcement is scary. And our opponent still has a lot of cards in hand. So any creature will turn into a pretty fast threat. Getting that plus one plus one. And Spikefield Hazard not going to be particularly helpful. So maybe go blank into Crush the Weak here. And then I really need a Bombardment. Although pretty high likelihood of it getting exiled as soon as we play it. At least a Borrowed time is gone. Okay, back to square one. And a generous visitor. Yeah, doesn't die to hazards. And a fang. And another counter. Can maybe trade off my hive for one of their creatures to buy time. Reign of Truth as well. At least they're not getting any immediate benefit from the first chapter, but... Still chapter 2 and 3 to worry about. We'll untap. Just a den of the bugbear, so... Opponent's likely pumping Fang. I can animate Hive. Opponent will control 3 enchantments. So it goes up to a 5-5, so not enough to Hive and Hazard to finish it off. So, at that point, maybe I just attack with Hive in a futile attempt to race. And then if they double block, I'm happy to trade for Fang. Sure. If they double block, I could also finish off Visitor. I guess that was an option, just if they pump Fang, I can block Visitor and finish it off with Spikefield Hazard. Doesn't feel great, but maybe that was still the best plan. Alright, so we're taking nine. And another Zoff Consumption. Okay, I think we try the plan now of blocking Visitor and finishing it off. And then I think I play one of these tapped. 
Could also attack with Den just to make a jump blocking 1-1 one, one for later. Yeah, let's pass. Opponent attacks. Could also just trade one of my creature lines for Fang, and that's it. Visitor does feel a bit more threatening, but if we take out Fang, it also shrinks down Portrait. Not sure how relevant that is. So I'll block with Hive, since I think then making 1-1s one is more valuable. Finish off Visitor. So probably should have done this last turn and saved myself a bit of damage in the process. Well, there's the answer we were looking for. So not going to waste any more time. Reset the board. And I'll hang on to Zoff Consumption. Okay, so... Got some good top decks. Oof, but a wedding announcement is a good draw for the opponent. There we go, Arcane Bombardment. At long last, so the game continues. Can play Consumption next turn, hopefully hit one of our big card draw effects. Or one of our sweepers now with Weaver in play. And then might as well keep up then on the off chance that uh, we make some treasure and we can activate it. Okay, Crush the Weak deals with the tokens, so that's a good start. Keep land in hand in case we need to discard it. Ranger class. All right. So they've got some nice card draw engines between Announcement and Ranger class, letting them play creatures off the top. So we need this Bombardment to deliver the goods, and we need to find some spells of the top to enable it. There we go. Okay, our deck's not letting us down here. Another burn down the house. Plus a Crush the Weak. Double Crush the Weak, okay. Would have preferred finding a different effect of Bombardment, but now at least our uh, Bombardment can deal four whenever we cast an instant or sorcery. Weaver gets exiled. Creatures now get plus two, plus two. And opponent's gonna level up Ranger class. No creature on top. Infernal Grasp is not a bad draw. So then can get busy. And then now we can essentially Wrath the board at instant speed. Just a land, still no creature. Okay. Well, those were some lucky top decks. Opponent's at four, so another den attack will do it. And we can wipe the board with Infernal Grasp to make sure there's no blockers in the way and our opponent packs it in. Wow, what a game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and seems acceptable, missing one of our treasure makers. But we've got some early interaction, and let's have a look with Duress. Facing a fight rigging deck, and we just took their fight rigging, so that's gonna be good. And they might not have a ton of basics either for this wildfire. One in hand already, although they probably have at least a swamp or a forest. It's a swamp. Valky doesn't see anything that it can take. Now, Shakedown Heavy is kind of big and not that easy for us to take out, but I can foretell a Crush the Weak and then play Tapped Hazard. So, next turn we can Voltage Surge plus play Crush the Weak to maybe clean up the Heavy and Valky. All their opponent knows about it. Still kind of forced to play it here. 
All right, let's uh, stick to the plan. And then I can even cram session on top of that. And what do we want to learn for? Maybe a card draw effects to bridge the gap to bombardments. Or I could get like a pus summoning to buy time. Even environmental sciences wouldn't be bad since we could use an extra land. But uh, let's go for introduction. Can always keep a land on top with it. And if we draw one, I would rather find more action. Another shakedown heavy is bad news, but we can wipe it away with burn down the house. So let's just do it now. Or do we want to wait? Cast prophecy now. Maybe let them play an extra creature, take six, and then wipe the board. Actually, I can buy that. Infernal Grasp also a decent answer, and then we can keep the land for bombardment. So I should probably just kill the heavy now. Or we can wait till beginning of combat in case they play fight rigging instead of playing an extra creature out. They have the green, but no fight rigging it looks like. So we'll kill the heavy. Play Bombardment, hope there's no Binding the Old Gods, which could definitely be in their deck. So do I wait until I play this and a spell in the same turn, or do we risk it? Although the problem is it's going to be a while before I can cast Bombardment and another spell in the same turn, since we don't have a ton of mana and no cheap spells in hand. Looks like they might have an instant speed removal spell, so that only leaves one unknown. All right, Tainted Adversary with a couple zombies. So Burn Down the House lines up nicely. Opponent declines to make the zombies to hang on to their treasure. Frostbite, also an excellent draw. So do I even need to wipe the board or do we just make some devils instead? If we hit Crush the Weak, it still cleans up the Innkeeper. Not sure here. Could also pass and then Frostbite, but not hitting the devil plan. Or I can just pass, do nothing, and a frostbite in the opponent's turn to trigger bombardment. Let's just make some devils here, keep a bread. And then we hit a duress, which could come in handy. And unleash the inferno. Yeah, that's something we want to take. And now we see why our opponents save the treasure to cast Titan of Industry, which they're otherwise trying to cheat into play. And not gonna attack with my Devils, but I can Frostbite the Adversary in the opponent's turn to trigger Bombardment once again. Probably should have done it in upkeep in case they drew a non-creature spell like Fight Rigging. So a slight missequence here. And I guess our opponent is somewhat close to casting that Titan, so that could be bad. We're gonna sort of force him to cast Infernal Grasp, otherwise we get to take it with Duress. And a Cleansing Wildfire. Yeah, opponent might be running out of basic lands, so not a bad hit. Especially with Titan requiring triple green, getting rid of their green source could help our cause, although they might have one forest left. Yep, so they still have the triple green required. Now our Devils can start attacking, and a Windfall was a great draw. So, I could wait on Windfall, in the sense that I could Inspiration learn for something, and then discard the card we learned for. Although it is pretty tempting to just Windfall now and maybe find more goodies. So let's try that. And then getting to replay the Wildfire. It's probably gonna take them off triple green. And then the rest is not going to do anything. Might as well deal with Innkeeper. So yeah, we turned into a land destruction deck once again. Opponent does have a second forest, somewhat surprising. Ooh, nice, big score. Another spell we can cast in the opponent's turn. So now I'll wait until, I guess after their draw step to potentially take away a non-creature spell with Duress. So we'll let them untap, draw, but before their main phase, we'll big score, 
so that we also get to wildfire one of their lanes once again, so they may not be able to play their titan. Awesome, so yeah, that uh, game worked out quite nicely, the early duress to take fight rigging, we had the removal to deal with the shakedown heavy and eventually bombardment to take over, and that's definitely our game plan, just survive until we get bombardment down, and then hopefully take over from there, so any deck that has removal for enchantments can give us a hard time, decks playing a Vanishing Verse or Binding the Old Gods, and then of course decks that have enough disruption to potentially kill us before we get Bombardment down, some of the white aggressive decks with Thalia and Elite Spellbinder can make our life incredibly difficult if we don't have that cheap removal, but overall I've been having a good time playing this Bombardment deck, not too different from the build I've featured in the past, and uh, of course a blue-red version does have its advantages as well as it gets to include Magma Opus, so both decks have their own strengths. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.